YouTube, my name is Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. Let's see, what we've had a delivery of bits and bobs for the late. Um, I'm dipping into this again just to get it sorted because we've got Matt coming at the weekend and he's gonna. I'm picking him up on Saturday and he is gonna finish all the wiring off. But we've got some bits and pieces. I do like it when stuff comes in little wooden boxes. Um, got some big old drills. <laughs> <laughs> I'll only ever be using these on the lathe. But that's from, I've got another set of drills over there, which is fine, that goes up to 13 in various sizes, but these go from 14 to 25. So they all do, they can live in the bottom of the lathe. And I've also got this, it came from RDG Tools, and it's basically a set of pre-ground, high-speed steel um, turning tools which look mega. I went for the, um, Steve-O did get me a big box. Let me show you the ones that Steve-O got. Look at that. They are quite antique -y. They are mahoosive. Some of it I could use. Um, but there's all sorts of stuff in here. So I'll be having stuff out of here that I can use. Um, grinding it down to do whatever I need and I can make forming tools and all sorts of stuff but it basically just means I've got a truckload of high speed steel. What's that? Oh, practice. <laughs> but I've got a load of high speed steel that I can be mucking about with um, and that way I can have a big old selection of tooling. Anyway, let's get him out of the way. Ugh. It is heavy. <laughs> but yeah, so in here, this, this kit was like, it wasn't massively expensive or anything else. But it's got like the basics in here. So, you know, thread cutting, both external and internal, we've got a boring bar, we've got a piping blade, we've got left and right hand facing tools. We've got chip breakers in as well, which is nice. Um, Roughing tool, finishing tool, that sort of stuff. So all I was going to do was shove a load in the, in the quick change tool posts. Um, I do need to hone them and put a bit of an edge on them. But I wanted to show you what's what. So basically you can get these quick change tool posts in all sorts of sizes. I think I saw down to 8mm, which is half that. This is 16 but it strikes me that if the whole thing about a lathe is rigidity, why stick a little tool in it when you can put a hoofing grate thing like this in it? Do you know what I mean? It's because that is going to be a lot stronger and stiffer than something half its size. Um, but these basically fit into here. Uh, and then you wind down the clamping screws. Like that. And nip them up. I'll do this when it's on the machine. Just because why wouldn't you? But you get the idea anyway. And then this bit in the middle is used for setting the, the height of the tool as you're going to use it. And then once you've got it where you want it, you nip that top one up and it keeps it in the right place. So you know, you just switch out your tools on the quick change tool post and you know that the cutting point on your tool um, is going to be smack in the middle of the the axis of the, of, of the lathe. And these can just like live on a shelf or in the cupboard or something like that and I'll just grab the right one as I need it sort of thing. So they're quite sweet, I'm liking that. That's very cool. This is the parting blade that um, came with the uh, well, yeah, with the initial set of these, and it is slightly different as you'll see. So it's got this, it's got this um, sort of fixture here. It's like a wedge shape. So as you do it in, it sort of clamps the blade into it. And this is just slotted to to, to take that. Um, this one, on the other hand, um, slightly different design, and it will go into one of these style um, style posts. But that'll do. And it's narrow as well, so, you know, why wouldn't you?
Yeah. Oh, that's heavy. <laughs> Um, there are a few other bits and pieces I'm still on the hunt for. Uh, I need to get a fixed steady rest. Basically, if um, if what you're turning is three times longer than its diameter, it really needs to have some sort of support in there. I've got a live center, so that'll help. But some stuff you're also going to want to kind of have, you know, if you've got a long something or other and you're trying to put a feature on the end of it, you really need a fixed steady rest. So I am on the hunt for one. They don't come up very often though, but I will have a chat with Mark and see if he's got one. Um, and I still need to get the thread cutting gears. So that's still in the mix. And you know, just other stuff like a work lamp and you know, blah, blah, blah. But I don't need some of that stuff in order to be able to use it and I want to use it. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. But yeah, so Matt's coming in on Saturday. I'm gonna pick him up. We got all the gear that we need to do, capacitors here, so we can get the motor wired up and hoof all that lot back in. I might change the mounting holes on my little plate, because I think it would be advantageous to be able to shift it a little bit further. So I might put another set of holes in, but other than that, that's it, job done. Um, and then I can actually start to use it, which would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and he's wired it all up so we got the it's, it's only just loose in there at the minute and i've got to tidy the cables and everything else up but he's stuck the motor back in he's shoved the capacitor on it and blah 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 and it's all wired up so it should work yeah hopefully it should work <laughs> we just got to press this one <laughs> i'll change it on for you go on then oh yeah that bit goes around, but that bit in. Yes! <laughs> right. Apparently, this goes narrow end towards you. Um, this is a bit that you'll have to do by yourself. I don't want to do it. Oh, it's going to be a proper bath as well getting it through because it's got to be fed down.
That's it. It all works. <laughs> I can't lead. Um, just gone through and checked out everything. Right? Everything is working fine. There's no nasty clunky noises or banging or teeth flying off it or any of the rest of it. Everything works really, really, really nice. Um, all the cross, the power cross flayed and you know, the power feed off the laser, all that stuff is fine. The gearbox is there. It's so yeah, I think bits of it is a little bit nadry and stuff to move. Like the, um, the thread cutting gearbox, you have to drop the handle all the way to then move it, to then bring it back up. Cause obviously you're, you're disengaging the gears at the top. Um, it's not the smoothest of operations, but it works. I don't care. The machine's 1963. <laughs> He's an old bird. Actually, it's not a bird, it's a bloke. It does man things, not girly things. <laughs> um, but yeah, everything works a treat. Everything's filled up with oil. It's dripping, don't care. It's gonna get covered on a regular basis anyway. The only thing we do need to change is, um, at the minute, Matt has got a, uh, a single, it's a hoofing great capacitor, but we're, we're on a single capacitor, a start capacitor. And he rigged it such that when you press the start button, it fires the capacitor. When you release the start button, it stops it. So you're then in continu into continual running. It really does need a dual run capacitor though so one for start and one for continual running so we've got one on order it's a plug and play job here it's not hard um but because we've only got that single capacitor in there we are losing torque out of the motor so as you go for the highest speeds the spindle speeds don't sort of pick up to it because it's always chasing the face sort of thing so that's coming um but you don't need to see that it works it goes I can start using it. <laughs> that was the thing. Um, it's been quite the journey, actually. I've loved mucking about with this and getting to learn how it works and all the rest of it. And now, I, you know, I get to learn how to use it properly, which is mega. There's loads of stuff I need to be making for the bike, and that's going to be a part of it. So, there you go. Um, if you've been watching the, the bike series, you know, we had all sorts of troubles with exhaust and stuff, trying to bend stainless. So I've got a load of mandrel bends. They're here. <laughs> so guess what I'm doing next? <laughs> but anyway, that's another video. Steve-O's back at the weekend. So hopefully we'll put a dink in that and we can actually get things going on this, which will be awesome. <laughs> I knew today was gonna be a good day. <laughs> anyway, thank you ever so much for watching us. I do hope you're staying safe because it's all gone nuts again. But look after yourselves and we'll see you again next time. Laters.